Before I get in, into the blues and what you do, uh, okay. tell me actually, how does this town reflect in what you do, in your music? How does this town, well it's, it's a good question because I'm just now finishing up working on a book with, with Frank mm -hmm. um, that, that is about the acoustic blues scene in Washington, D.C. from around 1975 to the present. And um, I mean, it, a lot of people don't realize that Washington really is a great, um, like, kind of center for for the type of music that I play. Um, there are a lot of great and kind of iconic, you know, acoustic uh, blues musicians that you know made their home in in Washington or in in the Washington, you know, Greater Washington area. I'm thinking about folks like uh, John Jackson, who lived in Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, my partner, John Cephas, you know, who's born in Foggy Bottom. Um, you know, um, Chief Ellis, who's a great piano player who lived in Washington. Um, uh, let's see, who am I forgetting? Flora Malton, mm -hmm. who was a, a blind uh, street musician that, that was an institution at, at right in front of Woodward and Lothrop for many years. Um, she sang and played gospel music. Um, Mother Scott, who um, ran away from home when she was 13 and joined the Rabbit's Foot Minstrel Show, that was uh, the same show that featured uh, Bessie Smith, and she told me that Bessie Smith actually taught her her first uh, chords on the guitar. And when I met her, she was living um, in, in up in the Mount Pleasant neighborhood of, of Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. um, so you had all these people that made their home in Washington, and then you had things like the Smithsonian Institute and the National Council for Traditional Arts that brought people from all over, from the Deep South uh, to Washington uh, to perform, and those people, you know, I also was, was exposed to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and to this day, like, um, I mentioned Archie Edwards. There's the Archie Edwards Barbershop that um, Archie used to have a barbershop on Bunker Hill Road in, in Northeast Washington. And at the end of the day, uh, well, not the, at the end of the day, in the middle of the day on Saturday, he'd close the shop down and his friends would start showing up and they would have jam sessions. Mm -hmm. And then a bunch of young people found out about that and they started showing up for the jam sessions uh, too. And it became kind of a thing that attracted young people. Mm -hmm. And then Archie passed on and a bunch of the people who had gotten to know him and learned from him decided to carry that on. Um, they they um, took over the barbershop. They set up a, the Archie Edwards uh, Blues Heritage Foundation. And the, the that shop got sold out from under them, but they found another location that was very similar mm -hmm. in uh, Riverdale, Maryland, where they carry on to this day. Um, Actually, tomorrow afternoon they'll be jamming oh, there, yeah. there, yeah, <laughs> and um, and so that's, you know, so that I guess that's kind of what um, you know, the way the way I DC reflects uh, the music I play is it's, you know, um, I get categorized as a as a Piedmont style player, mm -hmm. which you know, those categories don't really mean that much to me, you know, as a musician. I just, I love good music. Um, the main way that I would categorize the music that I play is that it's all been, you know, dance music. Mm -hmm. I, I would say it's country blues, you know, acoustic blues, um, although I write a lot of songs myself, mm -hmm. and, and they're, they're pretty much in that genre of acoustic blues, but, you know, they cover, uh, you know, what's happening in my life now, you know, so it's not like it's a tradition that's frozen in time. It's a you know, it's a living, growing, you know, moving forward uh, tradition. Mm -hmm. I, I was know. listening to your music. I mean, it's toe tapping type. Of, it yeah, makes yeah. you want to move yeah. type deal. I mean, is there something that draw drew you to the type of music that you play? Um, well, just the well, I w I would say the rhythm of it. You know, I mean, this music that I'm playing um, it has been the soundtrack for for celebrations from you know from the beginning i mean i since since i guess since well let's see blues i get that that term came into use around the turn of the century um but 
it, it, it goes way back and it has always been dance music. It's always been uh, music for celebration. So it's always had, you know, great rhythm and make, like you say, it makes you want to move. But it also is like directly connected to what you feel, to your emotions. And um, there, there's, you know, most, most of the songs are like a pretty simple, like three chord progression. Mm -hmm. And that leaves a ton of room for, for improvisation, which is, I think, probably the other thing that really drew me uh, to this music, just that, you know, you, you're, you're hearing something that in, in a lot of ways is being created like right as you're witnessing it, and the second after you hear it, it's gone. You know, it's not replicated. I mean, we, we, we play songs, we play melodies that, you know, the melodies basically stay the same, but like I say, there's a lot of room for improvisation. Mm -hmm. um, where 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 I think I really fell in love with this this music is like I was saying before, my family uh, is from Titusville, Alabama, which is right outside of Birmingham, mm -hmm. and I spent a lot of summers there growing up. And um, you know, so when I was growing up, when my mother, you know, she would talk about home, and I could even I could tell that she was thinking about home or that we were going to be going uh, to Alabama sometime soon because her her southern accent would get stronger. Mm -hmm. Or I could tell if she was talking on the phone to my grandmother because her, her accent got stronger. And so all, all my life growing up, you know, the, the word home, you know, which is, is not an easy word for me, you know, I mean, but, but I, I was I grew up thinking that home was Titusville, Alabama, because that's what my mother meant when she said home. Mm -hmm. And I, like I said, I spent a lot of summers there growing up. And I remember one one of my fondest memories w was that um, on Wednesday evening, uh, I would walk my grandmother to the church, which was about, only only about a block and a half from her house, mm -hmm. and. Um, and she would go there in the evening on on Tuesdays, or did I say Wednesday? It doesn't matter. But it was a weekday. It wasn't wasn't <laughs> sun, wasn't Sunday. Is the point? And and but what what they were doing was having prayer meeting, mm -hmm. and um and so they and it was just the elder women of the church that were there, and they would do what they called prayer and praises. And where one woman would sing out a line, and then the rest of the congregation would an answer back, you know, this call and response thing. And I would, I wouldn't, I'd be outside of the church waiting for my grandmother to come out because she didn't want to walk home in the dark. So mm -hmm. I would wait for her to walk her home, and I would hear that music, and I, and it really got under my skin. And I think that has a lot to do with where I am today. But thinking about uh, those times in your life uh, yes. when you were a kid, walking, walking grandmother uh, to church. Um, and then to the point when she picked up a harmonica, would you yeah. ever imagine that you would uh, reach the level uh, of notoriety <laughs> that you did with, with Mr. Cephas and individually yeah. and, and, and that? No, no, I had I had no idea. I you know I had no idea that this little you know I, I don't know three inches of of metal and wood would would take me all over the world. You know I mean I've I've had the good fortune uh, on on my own and with John. To travel to to every continent, mm -hmm. um, you know. I, I remember, you know, one of the milestones for me was uh, traveling to Africa, and I never imagined that that I I would be able to to actually visit that continent, but also to be able to visit it on the basis of of traveling as a, as a, a musician and as a cultural ambassador. Mm -hmm. You know, I, when I was learning this music. I just did it because I, I love to do it because it's I, I enjoyed it. it it felt good it felt natural and it was a way to celebrate um, I never you know it it, it you, not, realizing the the cultural and historic uh, significance of it that came way later mm -hmm. you know I mean the the fact that you know, people want to hear it, that people want to pre preserve it, quote unquote, preserve it. Um, that was never on my mind. I was just doing what I love to do. Mm -hmm. Well, and um, that I think that's what makes that fellowship uh, really special because it's looking at different types of music and different types of culture and making sure it's around. Um, how important is that to you? 
Uh, it's, it's very important. And I'm not going to get political, but especially in this day and age, mm -hmm. to be recognized by the National Endowment for the Arts for, for being part of this patch quilt that we call, you know, America. Um, I, you know, I've never been like a, you know, a patriot or, or, you know, I've never really felt very patriotic when I was telling you about like how like home is kind of a difficult concept for me. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that, that I do really appreciate is all the different cultures and all the different ethnicities and all the different uh, stories and, and, and all the different places that the people that make up this, this country came from to, to build this, this, to weave this, um, this beautiful thing that we call America. Mm -hmm. I mean, to, to be recognized by a, 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 an organization or a, a, that, that, that appreciates that as, as that, well, that, that appreciates that. I mean, it's just really important to me and really feels good. I mean, you know, and, and really kind of goes a long way toward helping me be more comfortable with the term home. But uh, another question for you, when it comes to the fellowship, I mean, including Mr. Cephas, uh, including Mr. Jackson, there are other names. There's B.B. King, Mavis yeah. Staples, John Lee Hooker have received this yes. fellowship. Yes. What's it like to be among those names? Uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, it's just a, such an incredible validation for me, you know, to, because, I mean, you mentioned John, and of course, you know, John and I, we were partners for 32 years. And, um, you know, John received this award, you know, many years ago. And and at that time, I, d I didn't receive it. And I guess there are probably a lot of people that, that, that think, that thought of us uh, in our duo, that thought of me as like John's side man, you know, mm -hmm. which between the two of us, we never really felt that way. I mean, we, we both, you know, understood that it was Cephas and Wiggins and there wouldn't be any Cephas and Wiggins without Wiggins and, and all that. But it, it, to, to be accepted as a peer of these people that you mentioned, it just, it, it feels like this amazing, um, validation for what I've been doing all this time and also in a way kind of feels like I'm at this point completely out from under the shadow of of John mm -hmm. um, but you know and and it's funny John used to always say he, he would quote the the Bible I you know he'd, he'd say you know the Bible says that that a prophet is without honor in his own hometown and I uh, I was like, well, in the, in the King James Version, they didn't have in his own hometown. But anyway, but, but so, but it is, it is. And, and, and when John and I started, first started playing together, mm -hmm. I mean, we, most of our performing was overseas. Mm -hmm. we, it, it, we were, we had done, you know, a couple of tours overseas before we started getting any recognition at home at, at all, you know. So, I mean, there's something about being recognized at home that is just a real just a great feeling and that, and it and that's a, another thing that this feels like and like i said you know it's it's all still sinking into me i mean it's pretty overwhelming to 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 realize um my frank who you were talking to mm -hmm. he he has done all this research and says you know you're you're only the the third harmonica player to ever get this award, and you're the only living harmonica player, There's, you know, and he goes on and on about that, and I'm like, I, I don't want to think about that, you know. <laughs> I, I just want to, you know. It's a special accomplishment, though. It, it, it is, you know. I, 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 I worry about any, anything that is going to get in the way of me uh, continuing to learn and to improve and to, to get better mm -hmm. at what I do, and to discover new stuff and so sort of like believe in your own hype you know in a way I'm that uh, I'm conscious that that can be an obstacle mm -hmm. you know to 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 uh, to continue to learn and that's the one thing I don't ever want to do is is stop learning and stop growing okay. one last so. question for you then All and right. you really just answered it but um, what comes next for Phil Wiggins oh man well the, the what one thing that I've been doing and love to do and I always have done even through the 30 some odd years that John and I played together is is make songs uh, make my own you know original songs 
and I love to do that, and and I hope to continue to do that, to get better at doing that. Um, of course, you know, having John in the band, John had a beautiful baritone voice, and I mean, there's very few people on the planet that can sing as well as he could sing, and so, you know, with all these record producers and all, we're going, well, you, you know, you don't need to bother singing. So I've been doing a lot more singing since John passed on, and I've I'm, I feel like I've gotten a lot better at it. I'm gaining more confidence with that. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is that I want to continue to make new songs and to make songs that that are useful, you know, that 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 you know inspire people, um, sustain, help people to sustain their spirit, you know, help people to keep moving forward. Uh, useful songs. That's what I want to continue to do and get better at. Great.